Bum, 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 bum. Greetings everybody with an highly exciting video for you. Everybody asking, what is Warhammer 50k going to be like? What's going to happen for the next 10,000 years? I will tell you right now. Basically, the Warhammer is going to pick up exactly where the Great Crusade ended and is going to ignore the last 10,000 years. That's the answer in two sentences. I'm going to spend the rest of the video giving you three reasons why that is the case. Reason number one. Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar wiped out the old world and all of the history with it. Gone. Irrelevant. So why wouldn't they do the same thing with 40k? In 40k's case, that would be the last 10,000 years up until the Great Crusade, which is what they've been writing books about. They're not going to erase those 13 years of books. Why are they doing this? New CEO of GW wants to mark the wall, wants to make this his show. He did that by wiping out Fantasy Battle and creating Age of Sigmar. Now you have to do the equivalent thing with 40k. That's going to be wiping out the last 10,000 years and creating a Age of Sigmar 50k is basically what you're going to get. We have all of the characters that have been carefully crafted and created for the last 13, 14 years with the Horus Heresy books. They didn't do all of that and then just throw them away. They're going to use that as the cornerstone of the next game. Basically, Age of Sigmar 50k. <clears throat> so we've covered uh, two reasons there. The real life reason and the Age of Sigmar reason. Now we're going to go on to the third reason, and that is, really, did anything happen in the last 10,000 years that we care about? The answer is no. Nothing happened. It was basically a stalemate while the Imperium rotted away for 10,000 years. So who cares if we throw it away? That means we're going to pick up exactly where the Horus Heresy ended and we're going to continue on with the Great Crusade. Now, what was the Great Crusade? Well, if you watch my videos, The uh, Master of Mankind, you will see that I talked about this in that the Great Crusade was basically ex exactly what the Age of Sigmar is. The Emperor goes out into the galaxy and attempts to liberate all of the human worlds from the predation of Chaos and Xenos. Uh, we don't really know much about the Xenos other than the Dark Eldar, so now it's going to be basically freeing humanity from Chaos. This is precisely what the entire storyline of Age of Sigmar is. So Age of Sigmar adopted the Great Crusade as its storyline. Is there any reason not to continue this storyline? Well, let's look. What stopped it was the Emperor being placed on the Golden Throne so he couldn't actively do work anymore. And secondly, the vault, his, the Emperor's laboratory, was destroyed by Magnus breaking through his protections and, well, destroying everything that the Emperor built over the last centuries. And what he built was a way for humanity to add its own segments to the webway, which, contrary to popular belief, was not, not built by the Eldar. It was built by an extra-galactic race 
that used bio-organic technology, <clears throat> a.k.a. Tyranids, or those who created the Tyranids. What stops this from continuing? You have basically one problem. Two problems, really. You have to get the Emperor off the Golden Throne. You have to recreate what was destroyed in his laboratory when Magnus burst through. Games Workshop has done both of these things. The return of the Primarchs gets the Emperor off the Golden Throne. Rabut was basically possessed by the Emperor and did the, uh, the Indomitus Crusade. Second, you now have the Eldar and the Necron working hand in hand with the Imperium. Why? This takes care of the problem of rebuilding the Emperor's Vault. Now, with the help of the Necron and the Eldar, you can simply explain away everything that was destroyed by saying the Necron and the Eldar recreated. Now the Imperium can go back to creating man-made sections of the webway. You understand? I will recap for you. One, the Emperor can now walk around in the form of Robot Gyleman as a Primarch and probably more Primarchs to come. And two, the Eldar and the Necron rebuild the Emperor's great work. <clears throat> this allows us to essentially pick up exactly where the Great Crusade left off and puts and creates, I should say, Age of Sigmar 50k. Humanity is going to go back into the stars with the sole purpose of freeing all of the worlds from chaos influence. This is exactly the same story as Age of Stigmar and the purpose of the Stormcast Eternals and their allies, the Elves, and all the other races that used to exist in fantasy battle that weren't a part of chaos. <clears throat> so, from this standpoint, you can see then that all of the Primarchs are going to return. Uh, you're still going to keep chaos Primarchs because chaos players need characters to play. And you're going to have loyalist Primarchs because loyalist players ha need something to play. Uh, the Emperor is going to return to his great work so he never wanted to lead the Great Crusade in the first place. So he's going to continue not wanting to lead the Great Crusade, which means it's going to be led by Primarchs, uh, by Saint Celestine, by the Adeptus Custodes, and by Primaris Space Marines. This is what's going to take place. And this is going to be a backdrop for all of the battles that are now going to take place in Warhammer 50k. Now, we had a couple other storytelling problems. And that was, interestingly enough, the Eye of Terror is an obstacle. The story goes is that the Chaos had to come out of the Eye of Terror, and really, uh, Eye of Terror, and the only way to do that was through the Gadian Gate as the only passable way. And that could only occur in the phenomenons known as a Black Crusade, of which there were 13 of them. Games Workshop takes care of this by creating the Great Rift. Now we have kind of mini Eye of Terrors all over the galaxy. This allows chaos to basically appear anywhere, at any time. And they made a very specific point of showing that it could be anywhere by allowing Chaos to take over Ophelia 7, right? Basically the, one of the homeworlds of the Adeptus Sororitas, the Sisters of Battle, 
cardinal planets, uh, which are, of course, the holiest planets of the Ecclesiarchy, and attacking Terra itself directly. These were, for those of us who read the lore, a very clear signal to say nobody is safe. Chaos can appear anywhere at any time for any reason without pretense. Even at the Imperial Palace itself, even on Cardinal Worlds, even on the home world of the Adeptus Sororitas, they don't care. They can appear at any time. This is specifically done to fix the Eye of Terror problem, where only Black Crusades could go out to attack the Imperium. I got the message. Thank you. All of this is simply a background. A background story for the new game that will be coming out. I don't know whether you're going to call it 9th edition or whether there will simply be an entirely new game roughly named, as I'm calling it, Age of Sigmar 50k. Um, why will the, t the, the, the last 10,000 years have basically already been redacted with the Primaris Space Marines, which are bigger, stronger, better, and less corruptible than Space Marines. Uh, or I should say, Great Crusade Space Marines. The only shoe left to drop is when they have Belisarius Call announce that he can create new and better Primarchs. Remember, he was given this, what is it, Sanguine Port? Um, <laughs> uh, which shows you that Games Workshop can basically just drop the Primark project in any form into the game at any time. Uh, before it was stated that uh, Corvus Corax had to basically bleed from his eyes to get a copy of the Primark project and which was then stolen by Alpha Legion and given in corrupted form to Fabius Bile and in complete form to the Cabal. Now they just have the Ultramarine sitting there saying, Oh, oh, you had to do that? I'm sorry. I've got a complete pro copy of the Primark Project right here. <laughs> it's too bad the Emperor <laughs> just didn't give you this. Instead, he had you walk an incredible maze and gauntlet labyrinth which almost killed a Primark to get a copy when I, I had this in my hand uh, the whole time. Oops. And even more interestingly, um, Vincent Six and the other Archmagos Biologus, I forget his name, that was working with Vincent Six and the Raven Guard, said exactly what... Um, Call said, he said it would take me 10,000 years to understand this data. Wow, I don't know what happened to that Archmagos. It would be interesting to find out. But apparently this new Archmagos, which is the same as the other Archmagos in every way except name, uh, took exactly 10,000 years to create, uh, to understand the Primark Project improve upon it, and make uh, primary Space Marines. Now, it's interesting that Corvax could do that in just a couple months. But this guy took 10,000 years. But if what he's saying is the same as this other pri uh, uh, Archmagos that was working with the Raven Guard, they don't only just understand how to make new Space Marines. They understand how to make Primarchs. Now remember, 
Primarchs don't come from a, from a gene seed or even from any human at all. They are created in entirety from scratch by the Emperor. This means that if Belisarius Call truly understands the Primarch project, he can create a Primarch from scratch and you're just waiting. You're just waiting for that codex. Waiting for that one book to sit there and say, oh, and by the way, apart from all of these other space, these Primaris space marines I have locked away in the vaults, I figured out how to recreate the original 20 Primarchs just by copying what the Emperor did. And I've got them sealed away in a couple vaults too. Just let me go uh, open those and poof! 20 Primarchs pop into existence. Unaltered. And this time they can be raised directly by the Emperor which will allow them to undergo the same indoctrinization process that the Adeptus Custodes go through, which would make them 1,000% loyal and completely un uncorruptible by chaos. And now, you have the entire framework for a power that can resist all of the Dark Gods. 20 uncorrupted Primarchs led allowing the Emperor to go back and take over uh, the Webway with the help of Necrons and Eldar. Um, and the Great Crusade continues forth the way it would have been as if the Primarch Project had never been interrupted. Which, again, I'm calling Age of Sigmar 50k. Because this isn't supposed to be an end game. This isn't supposed to be the end of a story. This is supposed to be a new game released by a new CEO of GW, which is going to basically reflect Age of Sigmar the same way 40K reflected Fantasy Battle. That's what I see coming. Now, what is the specific fluff that's going to go with that at? With, that's going to accompany that, I should say. I don't know. But this is both the real world and the in-game reasons that I see that's happening. I hope you enjoy that. If you have any questions, please ask me. Until next time. Bye. Hmm.